Today's entire khatira is about an animal, the camel of the Prophet ﷺ. This camel story is actually a summary of the entire seerah. For 50 years of the Prophet's life, he did not have the wherewithal to purchase a camel. And he had no need for a camel. When Allah commanded him to migrate to Medina, that was when he needed a camel. And so he told Abu Bakr al-Siddiq to purchase two camels. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq purchased two camels from the tribe of Banu Qushayr. And the cost of these two was 800 dirhams. And he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, this one is for you, Ya Rasulallah. And it is a gift to you. And the Prophet sallallahu said, no, I have to purchase it with its price. I'm not going to take it for free. So he paid 400 dirhams for the camel. The name of the camel, of course, is Qaswa. How old was Al Qaswa when it was purchased? Some sources say four years old, some say seven years old. And Qaswa remained the only camel that the Prophet owned until he passed away. Qaswa was the animal that the Hijrah occurred on. And Qaswa was the camel that the people of Uba saw when they saw the Prophet coming. They saw Qaswa first in the distance. That was the sign the Prophet had arrived in Medina. And when he walked into Medina on Qaswa, he's riding on Qaswa, everybody tried to take the reign of Qaswa. And our Prophet said, leave Qaswa alone for Allah is commanding Qaswa. And so Qaswa walked through the city of Medina until it stopped at what is currently the front entrance of Medina where the Imam enters from, Masjid al-Haram. Qaswa stopped right there and the Prophet said, this shall be our Masjid. Masjid al-Nabawi, its demarcation took place at the hooves of Qaswa. Of course, Allah commanded, obviously, right? Where Qaswa sat down, there was an empty plot there. And the Prophet said, we have to purchase this plot from the orphans and Masjid al-Nabawi was built. And in front of that, or some reports say, Qaswa traveled another distance. And some reports say in front of that, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari's house where the Prophet lived for six months while his house was built. One year after the Hijrah, the Battle of Badr takes place. And the Prophet is riding Qaswa in the Battle of Badr. And on Qaswa, the victory of Badr takes place. The Prophet wanted to inform the people of Medina of the victory. So the Prophet sent Zayd ibn Haritha on Qaswa. And he's marching in, jogging in, racing into the city. And he's shouting out, Uqbah has been killed, Abu Jahl has been killed. And he goes over the entire list until some of the people thought Zayd has lost his mind. It's not possible that all of these 70 people have been killed and Zayd is riding the animal of the Prophet and the rumor incorrectly spread. Astaghfirullah, but maybe the Prophet is no longer and Zayd has lost his mind, become delirious and he's riding Qaswa because of this. But the point is the Prophet chose Qaswa to ride into the city. Qaswa had a special pen where the camels live close to Baqir. And it so happened in early Islam that a group of Bedouins raided the city and stole Qaswa along with some other animals. And there was a female shepherdess. They took her as well. And they took her and they fled outside the city. And in the middle of the night, the lady, she's a Muslim lady, she managed to loosen her bounds, her ties, and she walked over to the area where all the camels that had been stolen were. And she wanted to ride a camel to go back into Medina. Every camel she came close to didn't recognize her. And so it made the noise of camels. And she kept on going camel to camel until Qaswa. So she jumped on to the one camel that understood what's going on and allowed her to ride in the middle of the night. And that is Qaswa. And as she's galloping back into the city now, she looks back, she is free. She knows she's made it. She says, Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I promise you an oath that as soon as I get back to Medina, I'll sacrifice this camel. Instead of thanking the camel, hugging the camel, kissing the camel. <laughs> As soon as I get back to Medina, I'll sacrifice this camel on your behalf. When she went back to the city, the day breaks, she tells the Sahaba where everybody is. They go and they get rid of the bandits, get all the stuff back. The next day she walks into the masjid. She says, Ya Rasulullah, I need your camel back. He says, why? She said, I made another a promise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah saves me, I'm going to sacrifice Qaswa. So the Prophet smiled and said, what an evil thanks you have given back to her as a joke. And then he said, and this is a fiqhi principle. There is no 
fulfilling of the nadir, over something that is a disobedience to Allah, and over something that you do not own. You couldn't have made this nadir because you don't own this camel. You must give the kafara of the nadir. Another incident of Qaswa, Sa'id ibn Musayyib said that Qaswa was the fastest camel and no camel could outrace Qaswa. Once a Bedouin came with another camel and a race was held and that Bedouin's camel won the race against Qaswa. The Sahaba felt sad that Qaswa had lost. So the Prophet ﷺ spoke to them to calm them down. And he said, it is Allah's principle and rule that whenever something is raised up, Allah also brings it down. No creation of Allah is consistently winning. Sometimes it'll win, sometimes it'll lose. Another interesting story about Qaswa, that once Qaswa was nowhere to be found. So the Prophet ﷺ sent out people to find Qaswa, one of the leaders of the hypocrites sitting in his house amongst the other munafiqun said, this man pretends or he claims that Allah speaks to him from the heavens and he can't even find his own camel on earth. Jibreel came and told him what that munafiq said. So the Prophet stood up in the masjid and said, Oh people, it has reached me that some people are saying this. And he knew who it was, but he didn't mention the name. Fawallahi, I am just a bashar. And I know only what Allah allows me to know. And he has just informed me that Qaswa is stuck in such and such a valley. Its rain has become entrenched to a tree. He said this in the masjid when the emissaries were still searching for Qaswa. So they went and they found exactly as described. Aswa was eating food and had gone around the tree and its harness it came entangled, so it couldn't come back. Qaswa was the camel that marched to Hudaybiyah as well. And when it was outside of Mecca, Qaswa just abruptly stopped in its tracks and refused to go on. And the Sahaba became irritated at Qaswa and they said, go on, move on, on and on. And Qaswa, it sat down. So somebody said, Qaswa has become stubborn. Our Prophet defended the honor of Qaswa. And he said, no, Qaswa has not become stubborn. And nor is this a khuluq that she has ever been guilty of. Rather, the one who blocked the elephants from Mecca has now blocked Qaswa as well. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told her to stay here. And then where Qaswa stopped, that's where the Treaty of Hudaybiyah took place. The next year after Hudaybiyah, it was on Qaswa that the Prophet ﷺ came back and performed the Umrah, his first Umrah in the seventh year of the Hijrah. And on Qaswa, he rode and he did the Tawaf. And he did Tawaf on Qaswa later on in Hajjatul Wada as well. Multiple times Allah revealed Quran on Qaswa. For example, after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah when the Prophet is going back, Umar ibn Khattab came up to him and spoke to him and he didn't respond. And he thought maybe, you know, the Prophet was angry with him. Then the Prophet recited, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. This came down on Qaswa. In the Hajjatul Wada, Ibn Abbas said, I saw Qaswa sit down because Surah Al-Ma'idah was revealed and the weight of Surah Al-Ma'idah was so heavy, the Prophet could stand it. Qaswa had to sit down. Qaswa was the animal the Prophet rode on when he conquered Mecca. And Ibn Abbas and Anas and others say, we saw the Prophet enter from Kuday. He entered riding Qaswa, saying Allahu Akbar. And his head was so low, it was touching the neck of Qaswa out of humility. You know when an emperor, when an arrogant general conquers a city, puffs his chest out, puts his head up. But that's not our Prophet And on Qaswa, he marched through entire Mecca until he entered the Kaaba. And on Qaswa, he did Tawaf. And as the Sahaba are seeing the symbolic sign of Tawaf in Hajjatul Wada, the books of Seerah say, they began to say Takbir so loud, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, that Mecca began to tremble from the Takbirat. And when he finished the Tawaf on Qaswa, he took his staff, and he walked to every single idol and he tapped it and he said, And every time he touched an idol, it just collapsed and demolished and disintegrated. On Qaswa, he's doing all of this. Right after Fath Makkah, the Battle of Hunayn takes place. And the Battle of Hunayn, if you remember, they trapped the companions, the Sahaba. They had the arrows from the top. There was a valley. They trapped so much so, some of the Sahaba didn't understand what's going on and they fled. Qaswa did not flee. 
Qaswa remained firm where it was because the Prophet did not tell it to leave. And in spite of the arrows and in spite of Qaswa stayed there. And from Qaswa, the Prophet called out to the Sahaba, come back, come back. And when they heard his voice, they came back and they fought in Hunayn and they eventually won the victory of Hunayn. It was on Qaswa that the Prophet went to Badr and the famous incident that there were enough camels. Three people were sharing every camel. And so the Prophet also had two people assigned. And they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, you ride and we'll walk. It's okay, we're young, what not? The Prophet smiled and said, no, neither are the two of you any younger than me, even though they were, and nor am I in any less need of the ajr than you. I also need the ajr. We will share. And so even though he was the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he shared taking turns. And the final point of Qaswa, Qaswa was the camel that the Prophet did the entire hajj on from Mina to Muzdalifa to Arafat. And this is really interesting. He used Qaswa to give the most famous khutbah in all of human history, Khutbatul Wada. And it was during the last days of Hajj on Qaswa that Allah revealed one of the final surahs in which the Prophet ﷺ knew this was the end. Ibn Umar says that this surah came down when the Prophet ﷺ was in the days of Mina after Hajj and he was on Qaswa. Ida ja'a Nasrullahi wal Fatih. And the Prophet ﷺ knew this is it. And as you know, when he came back on Qaswa to Medina, within a week he fell sick. And a few 10 days after that, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. And the story does not end here. Qaswa was 15, 16 years old, 17 max. And when the Prophet sallam passed away, Qaswa began to cry until it became blind. And in its grief, it stopped eating and drinking normally. And within a month, it passed away.